Welcome food and fitness lovers to Tina's Ageless Kitchen. I'm Chef Tina Martini. You might know me as the medicine chef. Welcome food and fitness lovers to Tina's Ageless Kitchen. I'm Chef Tina Martini. You might know me as the medicine chef. Well, today we're going to do something very fancy and yet very comfortable, beef short ribs. And I think everybody likes that. And it is kind of a comfortable Sunday dinner. All right, so I've got my pot on the heat already and we're gonna sear the beef first. Any time that we're going to braise something in liquid, we want to sear it so that the juices stay in the meat and you get that nice brown taste, that nice crispy edge. And then when the beef is braised, it doesn't fall completely apart and become mush. So searing the beef is what we're going to do first. We're going to create something called la fond, the foundation or the kiss that the pot gives to the food. Now again with the braising, and that's my personal favorite way of cooking, it's low and slow in liquid and we're going to use beef stock and red wine. What a great combination that's going to be. But what happens if you braise without searing first is the meat can become very mushy and have an unpleasant texture on the palate. All right, so the rule is in the kitchen chefs that the pan is already waiting for us and we're getting that nice and hot and we're gonna add a little bit of oil. All right, so after our pot and our oil is nice and hot, we're gonna go ahead and season our beef and get ready to sear. So I've just got a little mixture of salt and pepper here, and we're gonna start with the fattiest side down. So just pop that in the oil. Oh boy, I just love that sound. That's what we wanna hear, chefs, is that nice sear and that nice sizzle. I know I always say it, but we really want our pans waiting for us. We don't want to wait for them. All right, so we're going to render some of the fat, and that's going to add flavor. That's why fat starts with an F, right? Because it means flavor, and that's always a good thing. I remember the human fat receptors in our body are designed to uptake saturated fat. So there's a lot of myths floating around about beef being bad for us. How much of it do we eat? That's the question. Are you sitting down to a three or four ounce portion or are you gorging on a 20 ounce porterhouse? I think if we just use our common sense, we can see that it's better just to eat small amounts every now and then. And that way we get all the benefits of all the great minerals that are in beef. Not only that, but the red meat has such a great source of iron. It's hema iron and hema iron is the most absorbable, most effective way to get iron into the red blood cells and fortify our bloodstream. Iron really does a lot of repairing for us and as we go through life in this polluted environment we live in, we need all of that relief from the free radicals that want to do damage to our cells. So beef is great for you just in small amounts. And if you don't care for it, then it's not part of your nutrition program. Just use your common sense. All right, so we're going to go over our ingredients right now and see what's coming next. I've got leeks here. All right, leeks grow actually down in sand. So there's a lot of dirt inside, and I just wanted to show you that. So you make sure that you really open up the whole leek with your knife and get in there. Even if you cut rings like I did, separate the rings as much as you can. And that way you're assured to not get sand and grit in your beautifully finished dish. Nobody wants to crunch on that after all. So let's go ahead and make sure that we break those leeks down. Now leeks, anytime you have a call for a green onion, Try a leek out instead. It's really a very refined ingredient. It is part of the allium family, so it contains all of those great cancer-fighting phytonutrients. We've got some carrot for a little color and sweetness and some celery. Now celery, it has an element to us 
that can be carcinogenic. I don't recommend that you eat lots and lots of celery, but celery does have something called a pigeonin. And Harvard School of Medicine tells us that a pigeonin just may turn out to be the cure for ovarian cancer. So again, a little bit is great, a lot maybe not so good for us. And we've got some fresh thyme, and you notice that I haven't bothered taking the leaves off. That's fine. We're just gonna throw that in our braising liquid and the leaves will come off on their own when we're done and we're ready to take it to the plate. We just pluck those stems right out. Makes your job fast and easy and after all, that's what I'm here for is to help you make your life in the kitchen easier. All right, let's go ahead and turn our beef now and see how we're doing. That looks pretty. Got that nice brown color and oh boy, brown food tastes good, doesn't it? Love that sear, the beef is nice and tender. All right, so we'll continue and let that go for just a moment. We've got a bay leaf here and we've got some garlic. Now you may be wondering why I haven't done anything with the garlic if I'm gonna add it in. Well, it's just going to be part of the braising liquid and it's going to add a nice savory, earthy flavor as garlic always does. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna smash the garlic with the side of my knife. So just take it like so, let's get our little leek out of the way and just hit it with your fist and break it up and that way you'll get all those essential oils in your braising liquid and you don't have to bother with taking the time to mince it. All right, we're looking great here. Now, I know what you're gonna think here, so just listen to my words first, chefs. I'm gonna take the meat out after it's seared and I'm gonna put it back on the same plate that I had it, okay? It doesn't matter because we're gonna put this all back and cook it for two and a half hours. So at this point, we're not concerned with cross-contamination like we normally would be. So I'm just gonna sear that on the side and just hold it with your tongs. Uh, if the oil's splattering a little bit too much, just turn the heat down a bit. But we do need kind of that high heat to get the good sear. So I'm going all the way around the ribs. Whoops, come here, you slippery little devil. There we go. And it just takes a minute to kind of put that crust on it. And then once we've got that done, we're just gonna put that right back on the plate. All right, not to worry because it's all going back in the braising liquid and it's going to be brought back up to temperature. I think sometimes we get afraid and the media focuses too much on a lot of negativity with food. It's not the food, it's how we handle it. So let's make sure that we're just following protocol with our temperatures and making sure that what's supposed to be hot is hot and what's supposed to be cold is cold. All right, so we've got some yummy fond in the bottom of the pan and I'm just gonna put the carrots in, the leeks, I'm gonna put the garlic in. Oh boy, it's gonna be so yummy. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the herbs in. I'm gonna put a little bit of tomato paste in. Let's just use our spoon. Super high concentrated dose of lycopene in our tomato paste. The tip I give to the men in my life that I love is to take two tablespoons of tomato paste every day. Now tomato paste is concentrated cooked tomato. Remember, raw tomato, 27% lycopene. Cooked tomato, 300% lycopene. So the myth about fire and heat ruining phytonutrients and nutrition we're finding really isn't true. As a matter of fact, it opens up that phytonutrient and makes it easier for the body to utilize. So two tablespoons of tomato paste, Every other day would be great. If you can do it every day, that's fine. And what that's gonna do is give them a nice dose of lycopene to protect them from prostate cancer. As a matter of fact, Sloan Kettering, a big research hospital in New York, they do some great work over there. And they now have isolated lycopene so they can give it like an injection. And it's really working in almost 99% of the prostate cancer cases. So we're very, very close to curing prostate cancer forever. And I really love Sloan Kettering for that work that they are doing for our men. All right, bay leaves in. Now, I've said it again. 
make sure you count going in because you need to make sure you get them all out. They're like razors on the esophagus and we don't want anyone to have to go to the hospital from eating our delicious food. So be careful chefs and make sure that you know how many is going in and that way you know how many to pull out. Little bit of honey and oh boy, I just love the sweetness. It's gonna caramelize the vegetables beautifully. And the researchers are telling us that honey's connected to longevity. They even found honey that was still good and edible in King Tut's tomb. Can you believe that? King Tut knew the secrets, and so they honored the gods with a little bit of honey on the altar. I think that's pretty cool. And when they found the tomb, it was still edible. Honey is the only food on the planet that never goes bad. And last but not least, we're adding our onions for even more sweet and delectable flavor. Now that we have all of our vegetables in and they're coated with that tomato paste and honey, and those two ingredients are doing their job and helping to caramelize the bottom of the pan, creating that Le Fond or foundation, we're gonna get ready to deglaze with our red wine and our beef broth. Then everybody into the pool and into the oven, and we'll see those guys in two and a half hours for the most buttery, delectable experience on your palate. The authentic recipes for all of our products are signature to La Morena. The chilies are literally hand-picked for each can. Everything is manufactured in Mexico and imported into the U.S. La Morena is best known for its quality and authentic flavor, giving our users a taste of home. Stock up on flavor with La Morena. All right, it's time to get our braising liquid together now. And remember, there's only seven ways to cook food. Braising is low and slow in liquid, and everybody goes into the pool, you seal the pot, either with foil and parchment or with a lid, and the idea is not to break that seal until that meat is buttery and just falling apart. Wait till you see the finished product. Now the vegetables are all caramelized, and we've got a lot of nice little bits here on the bottom, La Fon, the kiss. So let's go ahead and get that up now. I'm gonna put a little bit of Worcestershire in, and this technique is called deglazing. So I'm deglazing or getting all the nice tasty bits up off the bottom of the pan. I've got red wine and gosh, red wine, really finding out a lot of great stuff about the longevity factor, heart protection, body fat burn without exercise. The resveratrol in the red wine is part of the bioflavonoid family. It's a whole family of phytonutrients that really helps slow that aging clock. I've got some beef stock here, and I do like the intense flavor of a stock. If you have time to render out bones and make your own stock, well then just put it in an ice cube tray, freeze it, and pop the cubes out and put them in a Ziploc, and then you've got stock ready for you. Just throw in a sauce, a stew, a soup, whatever you need, and it's there for you. All right, I'm gonna turn the fire up just a little bit more now and we're gonna bring this to a boil and we're gonna reduce it by half and that's going to intensify the flavor. Now I reduce a lot. I like to remove the water from things and concentrate the flavor, but the good news chefs, we're also concentrating the phytonutrients. All right, so make sure you scrape down the pot and you get up all of those bits off of the bottom. Now reduction is done over time and heat. So we're just gonna let that go as it boils away and you'll see the liquid start to go smaller and smaller, lesser and lesser, and that's concentrating all those beautiful flavors. Now, as we do that, we wanna stir just a little bit more and scrape down the pan, because if we don't, the bits will burn on the bottom and create a really acrid, uh, kind of yucky taste on the back of the palate. We don't want that. All right, I'm gonna put everybody in the swimming pool. It's time to get the lid on, get that nice tight seal, everybody into the oven for two and a half hours, and when they come out, that meat is just going to fall off the bone, and we're gonna serve that over a rutabaga carrot puree. Nice and smooth and sweet, 
with the real umami flavor of the beef and all of the braising liquids, that super savory something that makes you say, oh my goodness, this is the best thing I ever put in my mouth. So let's find our lid and get the swimming pool in the oven and everybody's gonna do their magic on their own while you and I get some other stuff done. I'll see you in just a minute. Hi, I'm Chef Joseph Manero with Taste This TV. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Cat's gluten-free products. Now, Cat's gluten-free is not only gluten-free, but it's nut-free, dairy-free, and soy-free as well. So when you're looking for a healthy, alternative, gluten-free snack, Cat's has got you covered. From their powdered donuts all the way to their cherry pie, chocolate muffin, choose Cat's whenever you're choosing the dairy-free and gluten-free. That's enough for Taste This TV. For more information, log on to the website at the bottom of the screen and check out Cats. All right, welcome back. Well, we're making comfortable food with kind of a fancy twist on it. So the next thing we're going to do while our ribs are swimming in their red wine pool is we're going to make some crab stuffed mushrooms. Now mushrooms, I can't say enough about mushrooms. Everything but the button mushroom. Button mushrooms, they're not that good for human consumption. So try to get something like this little cremini here or the baby portobello. Shiitakes are the ultimate. All of these mushrooms really have a lot of cancer fighting capability. And the way that they work is the amino acids help build protein in the body that helps create enzymes that produce cancer fighting elements inside of our bloodstream. So they actually go in and clean up the cells for us. And we talk a lot about cleaning the cells and that's very important because the environment has a lot of free radicals that do damage to our cells. All right, so I'm gonna remove the stems. Now chefs don't throw anything away so I would put these in a Ziploc in the freezer and when you're making mushroom soup or a vegetable stock, these would be a perfect addition. I've got a damp paper towel here and we're just gonna wipe off any dirt. I don't wanna do that over my mixing bowl. That wasn't very smart. All right, here we go. And you can see a little bit comes off. They're not really dirty little mushrooms, but you just wanna get them clean enough, and, and we've already been working on these guys a little bit, to um, not have any grit in your mouth. So I'm gonna go ahead and put our little buttons over here. Let's just do a few, and then we'll work on the rest later. Get that dirt off. Now these creminis have a really nice earthy, meaty feel to them, and they're a great addition to any recipe that you might like a little more of that savory flavor with a meat texture when maybe you're not even doing any meat at all. They are the vegan's go-to protein. I just can't say enough, as we said in the beginning about the mushroom, because these really are a great source of iron, and again, they have more of that meaty texture. Let's go ahead and start with our crab filling. Now, the crab in the can is just fine. If you have some claw meat that you want to use, whatever your favorite type of crab is will work just beautifully. Crab is loaded with selenium, and selenium is the anti-aging mineral. It helps us sleep better. It's very reparative. It's a brain function mineral, and it's also connected to longevity, not to mention really powerful cancer fighting ability. As a matter of fact, selenium is really looking like a major cancer fighting tool. I've got a little mustard and mustard is loaded with turmeric and turmeric has the big superstar in the news lately, curcumin. Curcumin really is a great way to prevent and hopefully cure as we learn more about it, breast cancer and all hormone based cancer. I've got some chopped parsley here for more epigenin. I've got some Worcestershire sauce. And then let's just put in a freshness element with some diced tomato. Now raw tomato, as we know, is only 27% lycopene. But you'll see that I'm using the seeds and the goo around the seeds. There's a professional culinary term for you, the goo. What we know about the goo around the seed in the tomato is that it's a very powerful blood thinner. So if you've got some clotting issues or things like that going on in the body and the vascular system, you wanna eat the tomatoes with the seeds intact. All right, so we have that fresh element and some color. 
And of course, the more color, the more phytonutrients. I've got some minced purple onion, shallot would work here. And then I've got some panko crumbs. Now panko crumbs are a more refined breadcrumb. They're really not as cardboardish as some of those other breadcrumbs. Fresh breadcrumbs are great if you have the time, but if not, the panko, really a nice way to just make the binding element happen without having to do any extra work. Now here's the thing with breadcrumbs. If you put the dry crumbs, and this goes with any recipe, if you put the dried crumbs in your recipe, the dry breadcrumbs are gonna suck up all the moisture out of your recipe. So always wet the breadcrumbs first. And I've got a little bit of white wine which goes beautifully with our seafood. So just let those absorb the wine. We could even put a little bit of our lemon juice in our breadcrumbs as well and just make sure that they're nice and moist before we add them in. I'll use my finger. Those are the best tools, aren't they? All right, so let's go ahead and put some of our breadcrumbs in. We don't need all these, just about a tablespoon. I'm gonna put a little bit more of the fresh lemon in, a little limonene. Let's see, what else do we have to go in? Oh, our egg, all right. So let's talk about the egg for a moment. Eggs are really great medicine. Free range chicken, organic, absolutely important. Now with hormone production, we wanna keep in mind that things like milk and eggs are the direct end result of hormone production. So if you're working in a challenge currently in your life, with breast cancer, cervical cancer, something of this nature. We probably want to stay away from dairy and eggs as much as possible because being the end result of hormone production, we don't want to keep putting more hormones into the body. I hope that makes sense. If you have questions, you always want to email me, Medicine Chef at Hotmail. All right, now remember, no pastry chef, no good chef strikes the egg on the container they're using. Why? Shells go in. So always strike on the counter away and then just break that right into your bowl. Now I've got a little fork here and I'm just gonna whip that up. Why would we bother if we're just gonna mix the whole thing up anyway? Well, if we just throw the egg in, we're gonna have little bits of white here, little bits of yolk here, and it just won't blend as nicely as if we whip it up a little bit. So when you're working with a recipe and you see that it says mix the egg or beat the egg lightly before you put it into your recipe, definitely do follow that advice and that way everything will bind beautifully and cook perfectly without little bits of egg here and there. All right, so I'm just gonna stir this up. Boy, I'm telling you, if we left the egg out, this would be a delicious spread on crackers or crostini as well. The egg, though, is gonna cook up and make it a little more firm. It adds some zeaxanthin and lutein, and lutein is really looking like one of the best ways to prevent and possibly cure uh, the macular degeneration, which is the leading cause of adult blindness. So eggs, and specifically the egg yolk, really high in zeaxanthin and lutein, two eye-based phytonutrients, and those, those give our eyes longevity and health. Okay, I'm gonna just stuff these. And you wanna mound it up so that it looks really beautiful. We could sprinkle a little paprika on top or we can garnish them with some fresh chives when they come out of the oven. So just kinda line these guys up so they don't fall over and tuck them together, just like so. Now this is one of my most requested recipes. It really is fast, easy, elegant, and delicious. And that's what today is all about, is doing elegant food that really doesn't take that much work. After all, the ribs are in the oven and they're doing all the work for us. All we had to do was create that kiss on the pot and then everybody into the swimming pool. Well, it's kind of the same here. It's just a dump and stir, put everything in, mix it up, and then just take a minute to stuff the mushrooms, and it doesn't even have to be that neat, just plop it on and stand them up. And I'm gonna keep going until our pan is full and we're ready to go. If you didn't wanna mess with this, you could just put the mushrooms down on the bottom, pour the whole thing over and put some of the panko crumbs on top and bake it in the oven like a casserole and just scoop it out with a spoon. That would be even faster and easier. All right, I'm all crabby. 
So I'm gonna get cleaned up and I'll see you in just a minute. Next up, we're going to do some lamb chops on the grill. For generations, our family has perfected authentic Mexican dishes from seasoned chicken and beef to carnitas, arroz, and barbacoa. The Cardenas family has always followed the traditions of their ancestors when it comes to cooking. From the beginning, they've created authentic Mexican dishes from scratch using recipes that have been passed down and perfected over generations. This tradition of gathering around a great meal with family and friends is what their Rio Foods strives to pass on. From our family to yours. All right, welcome back, everybody. We're coming to the end here, and it's my favorite time, the tasting time. Now the ribs have come out of the oven and really are looking spectacular on a bed of rutabaga and carrot puree. Now rutabaga is this crazy looking thing, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but you need to get more familiar with it because it's loaded with phytonutrients. First of all, it's a root vegetable, so it's loaded with minerals that fight all kinds of illness and help us sleep better and they help us repair ourselves even as we sleep. So the rutabaga is really a go-to veg, and being a root vegetable like the carrot, it's a perfect pairing. As you can see, it comes out like a beautiful orange color that tells us it's got the vitamin A cancer killer in it as well. Now what I did was I just diced it up, diced this up and roasted it in the oven put it in the blender with a little bit of butter and half and half. You could use vegetable stock if you don't want to do dairy, and that would be great. A little salt and pepper, blend it up into this velvety puree, and then bed your ribs right on top with some of your vegetable. Just pull out those thyme stems, the leaves have come off, so everything's perfectly seasoned. And then we have our little mushrooms on a decorative plate with a little bit of paprika and parsley. Now you're loaded with selenium and all kinds of cancer fighting enzymes. All your amino acids are present in your cremini mushrooms. So you've got longevity and cancer fighting capability here. And you've got all kinds of zinc and manganese and magnesium in your beef to produce superoxide demutase, one of the most powerful anti-aging antioxidants. Our crab's loaded with another anti-ager and that's selenium. Well, I'm ready to eat and I bet you are too. Let's dig in, chefs, to all the beautiful things that nature has provided for us. I've enjoyed my time with you. I hope you've enjoyed your time in the Ageless Kitchen. I'll see you next time. I'm Chef Tina Martini. Here's to your health. <music>